Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. It's great to see all of you again. Uh, John and I are here with our love connection, our love coach, Michelle Fabrica. Love coach, love coach, the love <laughs> coach. Michelle, as a love and relationship expert, as a coach, professional coach, you deal with relationships of all sorts. You've seen them come and go. I'm curious, what is it that makes them go? What, what, what destroys relationships? There must be a couple of, in your experience, a couple of surefire things. If you do this, you can kiss her, ask goodbye. It's not gonna, I, you know what I mean? What are, those, what are those surefire things that kill a relationship? Yeah, yeah. Well, are, are great. There, and, I assume and, there are some. Yeah, yeah. And this is actually based on the research of Dr. John Gottman, who's done research with couples for over 40 years. Oh. But it really comes down to, um, you know, there are many things that can, can kill a relationship. But what I want to talk about in this segment is about conflicts. So conflicts are a natural part of any relationship. And there's always an opportunity to learn and grow from a conflict and learn with each other and about each other and about yourselves. So it's not the conflict that, that is the problem. It's how each of you respond and interact in the conflict, right? So there are going to be differences. That's just normal and natural. And, and you know, of course, we're different humans. We, you know, viva la différence. Excuse my bad French. I, I don't speak French. Um, my daughter's going to cringe because she speaks French. Anyway, but um, so what I want to share is there's some evidence-based things that are behaviors that happen during conflict. And they're called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's what John Gottman calls them in his research. And um, yeah, so you curious to know more? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, first of all, I love the fact that somebody has figured that out. Yeah. And I can't believe there are only four. And that they're horsemen and not horse people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so um, what are they? Yeah, good get. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that what they are is, and I'll go through them and also I want to talk about what you can do to the antidote, they call them the antidote to them. So this is like, I, said, I mean, it's really amazing research and it kind of exciting that they put this together. So the first one is really criticism. Okay. And obviously if you're going to be criticizing your partner, you know, obviously it's not a behavior that we ought to be doing period. Right. Um, but often what can sometimes happen is in a moment of tension, oh, how could you do that? You forgot to do this. You never think of anybody else but yourself. So you might in the moment of anger say something that is a criticism to your partner. It's never okay to do that. However, we sometimes do it, unfortunately, in the moment. But the antidote is to like notice, to share what you're feeling and what you need. Wow, I'm really upset. I noticed the dishes aren't done and I... You said you were going to do them before I came home from work today. Something like that. So it's kind of like gently sharing, like a, rather than going to criticism mode. So that's the first one. Criticism. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's really don't attack is what you're saying. Is, is, uh, exactly. Make it about you. It's not about, uh, it's not about attacking your partner. And I have to say that, that I'm so fortunate to have John as my partner. Uh, uh, because whenever I go over to his house, there are never dishes in the sink. So, <laughs> but I think I think that's more of a relationship that he has with Penny. That's a different kind of relationship, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. John has never disappointed me with the dishes sink. So, of the four things that could kill a relationship, one of the things that's off the table for us is that there's not a we don't have a dish problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm just just saying. So, yeah, what's the second? Yeah. Second one is contempt. Now, this is similar, obviously, to criticism, but it's really about having, you know, um, sarcasm, moral superiority. You know, you're kind of like attacking who they are as a person. You're rolling your eyes like, oh, how could you be so, you know, stupid or, you know, careless or for you, whatever. So it's, it's using mockery, hostile humor. And um, this is actually the most, the most, the greatest predictor of divorce in couples. And it really must, needs to be avoided at all costs. And um, yeah, so the, the antidote to that is to build this culture of appreciation. And, um, you know, we've talked in another segment about the, the five love languages, but you want to 
regularly be sharing your love and expressing your love to your partner in the ways that they can receive it. So you're kind of keeping this, um, this is also part of their research, the magic five to one ratio of positivity to negativity. So you always want to tip the scales five to one, something positive, whether it's a touch on the hand or, you know, telling them you appreciated that they did this, took care of this business for you, whatever. So, so the antidote is to make sure you're keeping the appreciation and the love going. So that's, but yeah, contempt, avoid that one. Yeah, that that seems like a very serious one. Right. Yeah. So, uh, even even if at a five to one ratio, boy, a little bit of contempt can go a long way to destroy a a, a relationship. So yeah. we're that we're halfway down the list. What else what else can we do to help kill a relationship? <laughs> well, the other one is defensiveness. And uh, this is, you know, your partner's upset about something. You're like, well, you know, I was so busy today or, you know, making excuses. You're basically sort of trying to, you know, protect yourself from some attack. But in a way, you're really blaming your partner because you're basically saying, it's not me, it's you, you know. And so you're basically saying the problem's on the other side. And the, the antidote to this one is basically to listen to your partner and take an interest in their feelings, and take responsibility for at least your part in what they're bringing up, right? So, um, and, and this is a common one, right? Being defensive, but um, we have, there are other ways, right? Yeah, good good point, good point. Um, this is extremely useful because it, you've condensed it or Dr. Um, what's his name is condensed it. Gottman, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. By the way, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, could you give us the name of the doctor and the work that it comes from? Uh, the, yes. The, yeah. What What is that? Doctor John Gottman. And and uh, the the four. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's. I mean, you can Google it. It's. It's a lot of. There's a lot of good information about it and each of the. You know, different. Uh, the four horsemen in detail and and the antidotes. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure we to have a link that. there. We'll, 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 yeah. We'll, We'll research and get the link into the YouTube description. Yeah. But, but, but wait, we have one wait, more. Wait, there's more. We, there's yeah. more. If if you if you listen if you like these three killers, okay, let's go for number four. <laughs> yeah. So the fourth one is stonewalling, and it's kind of what it sounds like. You're basically like you're putting up a wall. And you're no longer listening or available. You're checking out. You're maybe starting to do your email or look on your phone. So it's basically like often it happens. In fact, 85% of the people who tend to be engage in this behavior are men. They found in the research too. But you basically are overloaded and flooded, and you just. But the problem there is that so you've stopped engaging with your partner, but your your partner is like getting more and more frustrated because like how can they not care and they're sh they're they're shutting me out. So that's where it can escalate really badly. So the antidote really is just to notice. Okay, you know what? I'm kind of overloaded here. We need to take a break here. And I, I think I talked about this pause agreement idea in another video. But the, the idea is that like, there's no point in continuing. Nothing is going going to be um, advancing in a positive way once someone is like at the point of being flooded, fight or flight, whatever. So you take a pause, and you do some what they call psychological self soothing, which is you know sitting quietly by yourself. Maybe think of something that's um, a memory or something that's soothing to you, maybe you take a walk, be outside, anything, maybe, you know, just hold your, hold yourself, give yourself a hug, something to kind of like take the energy down. They suggest take at least 20 minutes for your physiology to settle itself back down. Hmm. Wow. Um, great stuff because, you know, it is, uh, th there's always conflict. No two, no two people uh, except maybe Art and I are perfect partners. We are. We're, uh, we're close to perfect. So it, dealing with the conflict is really important, and dealing with it in a way that doesn't, you know, kill the relationship. Exactly. And so these are these are great. Also, Michelle, uh, you mentioned on the fourth uh, relationship killer that it's uh, uh, some. It, it seems to be more on on a guy. And I can think back, uh, uh, both John and I are married 50 plus years, something like that. And uh, but I can think of plenty of instances where those things came up on both sides, but especially where maybe I was guilty. And uh, along the way, somehow we must have figured it out um, uh, to, you know, come back from the edge. 
But it would seem to me that most of these things are more on the guy than on the gal. Uh, uh, these four killers, or in your in your professional experience, have you seen there's some kind of equality to it that we're equally uh, uh, disastrous to one another uh, with these four items? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any. Uh, I couldn't uh, posit a guess to to say which you know what gender is more likely to do which. I think it's a, it's just, it's kind of like a dynamic that starts to happen. So I wouldn't want to, um, you know, cause it's really not about blaming here. I want, in fact, the, the last thing I want to uh, bring up is that um, notice that I kind of sidestepped that cause I didn't really, I didn't, I don't think it's helpful to kind of generalize uh, gender. But the other thing is that this is, can be an inquiry as a couple. So you can sit, wow, which of these behaviors do we, do I tend to do? Do you tend to do? not like as a shaming session, but to get curious without judgment and think about how you can be an ally for each other. Like notice, like, you know, when somebody says something critical, you know what, I didn't like what you just said. Can you say something different? Cause I'm not wanting to, to participate in this, in, you know, interaction right now. Or, um, you know, something, I think if each person is a good steward for the relationship, they can find ways to interrupt any of these four things. So sometimes only one person is able to do it. And that's, um, anyway, that, that's a final thing I want to invite because it really can be, you know, we might do them sometimes, you know, it's not anything to be, you know, feel shame about. It's like, how can we do better next time? And how can we have our partner help us to do better? Yeah. Mm. Good point. And that's what partnership is. That's what uh, a relationship should, should be, helping okay. each other, it's even always- in conflict. Right, and it's always yeah. uh, remarkable that every time we speak to you, uh, sometimes about extremely sensitive topics or others that are maybe not as serious, is that you've always really thought these things out. You've observed other people, and the advice that you share with us is uh, uh, just great to help us think about things that we might have been doing in the past uh, or might think about doing in the future and say, well, Michelle once said something about that, and uh, maybe I ought to bite my tongue or uh, take a time out. Maybe I should go to the corner <laughs> until the corner's <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah. Taking a pause, it um, can be a good thing. Very helpful stuff, Michelle. Thank you so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.